So you know how important and how crucial mindset is in achieving your goals and how actually it is the starting point of everything that you create. So it's not just important, it's vital. Why working on you is so much more important than finding the strategy piece because it's the person behind the strategy, behind the business that is going to create the outcomes, that's going to create the results, that's going to create the amount of money that comes into the business. This is all driven from who you are, how you're thinking, how you're feeling, how you're acting, the decisions you make on a daily basis. It all comes from you. So this is why if you you might have bought a program from a strategy coach before and you could be doing exactly the same thing, following their steps to a T and they're making millions of dollars and you have a flopped launch or whatever it is that you're sort of modeling from them. So why is that that two people can do exactly the same thing, exactly the same steps? It's because of the person behind. It's because of all the thoughts, all the feelings, all the energy that's going out. It's the attractive power. What are you attracting? They're attracting from one sort of level of frequency. And any one of us, if we're not believing in ourselves, if we are expecting failure, if we are full of doubt and criticism and our inner dialogue's really, really poor then we're going to be diminishing the amount that we actually create, the outcome that we create. And we're going to be operating on a much lower vibration. So I will talk about more about this on Friday, on Thursday. Thursday, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll go into that a little bit more. But the point being, it's you, it's who you are, it's how you think. This is going to create the success that you want. So remember, Oprah said, it's your being that drives your doing. And Bob Pro Proctor said that it was 95% mindset. 5% strategy, this is success. And Tony Robbins, of course, 80% psychology, 20% mechanics. So all of this talk of mindset, though, is it's not just mindset, okay? Mindset is just a piece of the puzzle. It goes so much deeper than this. And this is what I want to be covering with you today. I want to talk to you about the subconscious mind because this is the driver behind everything, okay? So I'm just going to share... A little image with you add to stream yes okay awesome so if you think about your subconscious mind like an iceberg not your subconscious mind your your mind as a whole the bit that you see above the surface is your conscious mind so this is what we're thinking with this is what you're listening to me with this is how you go about planning your day this is how you are making you know we experience life and we think about what they mean to us we give meaning to things we label things we judge things we you know we're actually actively using our mind all day every day that's our conscious mind okay it's rational it analyzes it gives meaning it plans and we have our short term memory there as well but this is only this only accounts for 10% of our mind okay the other 90% of our mind is subconscious, which means we are not consciously aware of what is going on in it at all. So that is a, a scary amount of your mind is unconscious. You're not aware of it. Okay. And this is so important to know because this is what's driving everything. So with your subconscious mind, if you imagine it's like a supercomputer, and it's just literally running the show. It's programmed. It's doing everything without conscious effort. It's just going about its day. It's programmed. It is running itself and it's running you. OK, it makes decisions all day, every day. It filters. So another, I get lots of different stats when I look for this online. So if you imagine just use the thereabouts sort of ratio, but your subconscious mind can process around 11 million bits of data a second. Your conscious mind, because it's so much smaller, can only process about 44 bits of data a second. So that's astronomical what your mind is actually taking in from the environment, from everywhere around you, all day, every day, every minute of the day. But you're only aware, aware of this tiny, tiny bit of it. And that is because your, your supercomputer, your program and your subconscious mind is filtering all the data that's coming in and it's deciding what is relevant for you to be aware of okay so according to whatever you're focused on whatever you want whatever you believe it, it filters through your belief systems it filters through your programming right so you're only ever going to have access to a, a minuscule amount of the data that it's it's receiving okay so let's just have a look so it's your subconscious mind when you're born and you're and you come into this world 
you until the age of about seven, you have no analytical function in your brain, in your mind. So your subconscious mind is wide open and it is literally soaking in everything from the environment, from society, from, you know, the family, what the family is telling you, from what school's telling you, everything comes in and it's accepted as truth, absolute truth, because there's no analytical function yet that's been developed. So it can't reject anything. It can't say, no, 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 that, that does not seem right. It's just, you know, so when we're really little, those things that we're told about us, if we're criticized, if we are told that, you know, we're really, really naughty and we're no good and all these, all these types of things, that gets stored as part of our subconscious program and it stays in there forever unless we do something about it, unless we start changing it. And some, we can change our programming as we go through life, as our belief systems change, as other things change. It's not like you have to just, you know, do this specific work, but the likelihood of it is, there's a lot of crap in there that's <laughs> still whirring in the background on an on a subconscious level, so you're not aware of it, and it is affecting all the things you do. Everything that you let into your life, everything that you attract into your life, everything that you think, everything you believe, okay? So this is the point I just want you to understand is the subconscious mind is powerful. It's running the show of you. It's running you, and it has been programmed at a really early age. And then it's just been added to and added to and added to throughout your life and throughout your experiences. So this is just to give you an idea of how strong it is. Okay. Your subconscious mind. So you, all of your bodily functions are managed for you without you asking, without you thinking, without you setting an alarm clock and thinking, I've got to have more air around my body. You know, I haven't circulated enough air yet. You know, you've got no gauge on you to show you if you've got enough blood running through or anything like that, your subconscious, your mind is so intelligent and it's so powerful, so powerful. And it does all these things that I'm about to read you without you asking, without you even knowing it's doing it. Like we take our bodies for granted so much, don't we? We just assume, we criticize them. We complain about the way we look and we criticize if we get aches and pains and all this other th all these other things but look at what our body, you know, our mind and our body are doing every second of the day. Our heart beats over two gallons of blood per minute, 100 gallons an hour, over 100,000 times a day, and over 60,000 miles of blood vessels. This is all in your body. This is all happening without you knowing. You lose 25 million cells a second, but you're also regenerating them. You inhale 2 million liters of air a day, and within seconds, it's transported to every single cell of your body. Every single cell of your body is given the air that it needs. All of your cells hold vast amounts of information, data, and they talk to each other. They communicate all throughout your body. So you've, oh, well, there you go. So it's 20 million bits of information per second is coming in through your sub subconscious mind and about 40 bits of info per second through your conscious mind. So just so small in comparison. So your subconscious mind is totally running the show. So I think I've got my point across now, right? It's in charge of everything and we don't even know what's going on in it most of the time. So you could, so if we just think about this filter scenario, we have all this information coming to us all the time and we could be saying, you know, universe, send me a million dollar idea, send me this solution, send me that answer. Like, I need this, I need this. All this information is there available to us and it's all coming at us all the time. But our, our subconscious mind is filtering it. Our RAS, our reticular activating system is filtering it. Okay, so it's choosing automatically according to what it thinks we're focusing on, what it thinks is important to us, right? So we could have all these ideas around us, like all the solutions to your problems you have around you right now, you have access to. But because we're focused in a different way and we tend to focus on problems and things and what's going wrong and the lack and why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? What's wrong with me? Then there, that's the data that's being filtered in. It's like, oh, yeah, because there was that time you did this and that time and that time it didn't work. And look at that person doing it. And you're not doing that. That means you're no good. You know, we tend to get wrapped up in that. And all the while we've got our million ide dollar ideas like right next to us waiting to get in, but they can't get in because they're being filtered out. Okay. So the invisible force field holding you back, it's going to whatever level of business you're at, you could be at the beginning, you could be 
you know, making a couple of hundred grand a year, you could be making seven figures a year. It doesn't matter. Whatever level of business you're at, the thing that's going to stop you going to the next level is this invisible force field. It controls the amount of success, income, and joy that you experience in your life and on a daily basis. And this is why we self-sabotage. This is why we'll go on a diet for a week, feeling all geared up to doing it. Yeah, we're going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to lose this weight. I'm going to be really healthy. I love my body. Yeah. And then on Friday, we're, we've got a massive bag of crisps, a bottle of wine, a bar of chocolate. Can't be bothered to go to the gym anymore. I'm done. You know, we keep getting pulled back. And it's because of this programming. It's called our paradigm. And our paradigm is just a collection of it's this program of unconscious beliefs, ideas about who we are, ideas about the world, all these things we've accepted over the last 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years of our life. It's our self-image. It's how we see ourselves on a subconscious level, not how we think we see ourselves, how we really feel, uh, see ourselves. And a lot of this includes trauma and wounds from when we were little, from rejection when we were little. And it wouldn't have even, doesn't even need to have been a massive thing then but to us because we didn't have the tools that we needed to process our emotions it gets stored as a wound and it gets stored as this must mean I'm bad this must mean I'm worthless this must mean right because we don't have the tools because we're young and we're just accepting all of that information in so your paradigm so it acts like your internal thermostat OK, so if you imagine a control temperature in a room, it keeps you at the level you're at. So the control temperature in the room will keep it at a certain temperature. If someone opens the window and the temperature drops, then it will put the temperature on, uh, it'll put the heating on again. It'll bring it back to that temperature. Likewise, if it gets too hot, it will stop the heating until it drops back down again. So this is what your paradigm does. This is what your self image does. It is an internal thermostat that is literally saying when we when we are entrepreneurs and we're about to make big, bold moves and we could also just be getting loads of success and it's really cool, things are going really, really well and then something happens, we have that thought, oh, it's all going to start going wrong. It's too good to be true. And this is in our personal life as well. It's too good to be true. Then we start looking for what could go wrong. And then, of course, we start attracting that, which is a form of self-sabotage and it's our internal thermostat going, no, you can't go up to that level. You need to stay here. This is this is safe for you. Anything outside of this program is not safe. So I am going to do whatever it takes to pull you back in. Right. So this is why we self-sabotage when it comes to our healthy eating, going to the gym, losing the weight that we want to lose. It's the subconscious beliefs, the identity, the self-image, the programming that's going on. And we get frustrated and we're just like, why can't we do it? And then we make up a whole narrative about how we're rubbish. We're no good. It just, there must be something wrong with me. Everyone else can do it. It's only me that can't do it. What is wrong with me? Right? <laughs> Sound familiar? So this is happening to us all the time. And it's just the programming. And the best thing about all of this is the programming can be changed. Your whole paradigm can be relate, replaced. Your belief system can be replaced. Your self-image can be replaced. It can all be replaced. And when you replace it, you're allowing yourself to go to that next level. So even the amount of income that you earn, there's a financial thermostat within your paradigm that's basically telling you, it's part of your self-image. I am the type of person that only gets to this amount. I'm the type of person that earns this. And as soon as you start devi deviating off that, as soon as you start earning more and doing really, really well, something will happen. You might get ill. There's a book called The Big Leap by, I think it's Gay Hendricks. And it talks about the upper limit problem. Subconsciously, we pull ourselves back. We might get ill. We might start arguments in our relationships. You know, we look for ways because we just feel like it's too, too good. It's too positive. It's too much. And that's not who we are. We can't deal with that amount of good. So we bring ourselves back down all unconsciously. You don't know you're doing it. We don't know we're doing it. But this is why this work is so important. Because by doing this work on ourselves... Not only can we change the paradigm, we become very aware of what we're doing. <laughs> we know what we're doing. That comes with its own frustration sometimes because you're like, I know I'm doing it, but I can't stop. <laughs> but what we're aware of, we can change. What we're aware of, we can control. OK, so basically what this means is that we spend 
most of our lives living on autopilot. In fact, I might talk about that in a minute. Have I talked about, we spend most of our lives living on autopilot because our subconscious mind is just regurgitating thoughts over and over and over again, okay? You have 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day. 90% of those are the same thoughts you had yesterday. How scary is that? So every day you're regurgitating the same stuff over and over and it's coming from your paradigm. It's coming from your belief system. It's coming from your past experiences. Like we spend our life projecting our past into our future, thinking that we're gonna make the same mistakes. This didn't work, so it's not gonna work next time. I don't know how to do that, so I can't do that. But what we want is in the unknown. Everything we want is in the unknown. This, th this thriving, wildly successful business if we haven't got it now, it's in the unknown. So why are we predicting our future based on our past when our future has to be something completely different? But our paradigm's running. We're on autopilot. We're not thinking. We're walking about our day in a daze. How, can you, how many times can you relate to this? You know, we end up driving somewhere and we can't remember how we got there. We can't remember going through the red light, uh, through the traffic lights. And we're like, oh my God, I hope it was green. Well, of course it was. We've just slipped into autopilot. Like our brain is very clever. It's still taking it all in, but we're in la la land thinking about God knows what, right? <laughs> so even the way we get up and we get dressed, like we're not thinking, oh, I'll just put this left trouser leg on and now I'll just put, we're away with the fairies. You know, if we go to the gym, if I go swimming, you know, my mind's constantly churning. And if we're not aware of what's going on in it, if we're not actually becoming an observer of that, it can be thinking and regurgitating the same old crap that is then becoming an attractive force in our life that is attracting more things to us. Because remember, our thoughts become things and our thoughts impact our, create our emotions, which impact our actions, which create our results. So if we're not listening to what is going on in there, then we, we're we gonna find it very difficult to change our reality. So we have to become aware. We have to wake up to it and just be aware, like your mind is not you. You don't have to judge yourself for whatever's going on in it. You just, your mind is like a program. It's just going on and on and on and on and on. And you are not your mind because you can notice the thoughts that you're having. So if you can notice the thoughts that you're having, what does that make you? How can you be your mind? Because your mind is still going, you're listening to what it's saying. You're sat there having a conversation with yourself saying, why am I saying that to myself? Right? When you listen to your mind, try it later on. Just become aware of what is going on in your mind. You, it happens when you meditate. Sit down, quiet your mind, thoughts, 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 thoughts. And you're like, oh, quiet, right. Let go of the thought, let go of the thought, let go of the thought. Who is that in the background letting go of the thought? So you're not your mind and you absolutely can become an observer and you can interrupt it and you can direct it, okay? So how many of you can relate to the being on autopilot then? Tell me when you end up going on autopilot during your day? Is it when you're driving? Is it in the morning when you get out of bed and you're really tired? I would love to know. Let me know in the chat. And, you know, if we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day, how many are you aware of? How many are you conscious of? Like, we can't keep count of those. So we need to start really directing that attention. So going back to the paradigm. So your paradigm, this computer program in your mind, so let me know in the chat again, do any of you feel like something is holding you back like that, but you can't put your finger on it. So you're trying to do these things in your business. You're trying to earn more money, take it to the next level, get sign more clients, grow your audience, grow your list, whatever it is. But it just feels like there's always something holding you back, but you just don't know what it is. Let me know if this resonates at all or if things are suddenly going well, like the example I used, and you suddenly say it's too good to be true and then start anticipating disappointment or failure and then something bad happens and then you're like I knew it <laughs> right because this is how we've been conditioned to live and think this is what we've been taught we've been taught by our parents that you know oh bad luck comes in threes who wants bad luck in threes like we create that we, we attract that into our lives because we think it and we believe it so you're not or maybe you're not doing the things that you want to be doing in your business you know you need to do things and you're avoiding them or, and you're getting frustrated because you know you really want to do them or should be doing them. Or you end up doing things that you know you shouldn't be, that you know that you don't want to. And again, this comes back to the cookie cupboard, doesn't it? 
like you're, you're dieting, you're, you know, you're wanting to be healthy, you're wanting to lose weight, and then your hands in that cookie drawer all the time. Illness is my upper limit problem, right? But when we, but when we're aware of these things, we can start addressing them. We, we need to go deep. We need to figure out what is in our subconscious mind. Oh yes, jogging too. I do this all the time. Yep, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so it can one hundred percent be changed, as we said. So I'm just going to give you a couple of examples, and then we're going to start talking about beliefs because I realize time is a ticking. So just two examples to help you uh, with me and my paradigm. Okay. So a few years ago, I started an Airbnb business and I ran it for a couple of years. Um, it was profitable. I'd gone and learned how to do it. I'd gone and set it all up. I was terrified the whole way through completely out of my comfort zone, but I did it anyway. And I showed up and I was doing the things and it could have been really successful. I had a couple of properties I was managing for other people. It was doing fantastically during the summer. I was managing to get it through the winter as well. Ultimately, it was profitable and I could have easily grown it, but I didn't. Why didn't I grow it? I just held myself back and I avoided it and I just kept it ticking over, which was not the point of having another business. I had this crippling fear that guests were going to phone me in the night having plumbing leaks and all these other things. I had beliefs around not being able to get direct bookings, not being able to fill up, fill the place up. I had beliefs about too much competition on booking.com and all these other things. Like I had subconscious beliefs that I couldn't be successful, that I didn't even know. I had a self-image that was more associated with failure than success, but I didn't know. I had a beliefs about my worth, not being worthy, but I didn't know. So for those two years, I didn't take it anywhere else. I didn't grow it. I didn't do anything with it. And in the end, I closed it. And it's all because I hadn't addressed the paradigm. I hadn't replaced the paradigm and I hadn't aligned myself to what I was doing. So I was pulling myself back. I was holding myself back. And then when I started the coaching business, oh my goodness, that was another, I'd hit seven figures in my other business. I was doing really, really well put myself out on social media. Oh my goodness. Imposter syndrome galore. Who the hell am I to be saying this, doing this, you know, claiming that I'm a teacher or a coach or a mentor or some kind of leader, you know, this is crazy. Who are you? So I had to, so this time I knew all about the subconscious program. So this time I reprogrammed my self-image. I reprogrammed my beliefs. I changed my subconscious programming to align myself to my new business adventures so that I could put myself out there, so that I could grow my business, so that I could do the things that I really, really wanted to do without holding myself back and could just go for it. In spite of the fear, in spite of the doubt, I just continued to go for it. And that is the difference between doing the work and not doing the work is you either give up and you fade and you stay small or you go for it and you're willing to learn on the way and you're willing to take failure as lessons. You're willing to make mistakes. You're willing to do all these things because you've aligned yourself to the outcome, to the end result. And you start seeing yourself as that person, which grows your confidence all the time. You're changing the program. You're holding yourself back in less and less ways as you become accustomed to it, as your subconscious mind is rewired okay so we're just going to spend i'll try and keep you no longer than 10 more minutes let's see if i can do it in eight so quickly and you'll have this all in the workbook so one of the biggest things is there's the paradigm like there's self-image self-image is absolutely huge in with my unstoppable clients we spend two to four weeks going in deep in our self-image and recreating our self-image and reprogramming our subconscious mind with a new self-image that aligns to these incredible, amazing, big visions and big goals that we have. So to try and put that into five minutes here would be impossible, but basically your self-image is your concept of yourself at a subconscious level. And as Tony Robbins said, the strongest force, he says, in the universe is our necessity to act in accordance with who we think we are, with how we define ourselves. So whatever that self-image is of us, subconsciously, we will never behave in a way that isn't in accordance to it. So if we have a self-image of a failure, of being someone that no one wants to listen to, no one wants to hear, not being good enough, not being able to do it, always failing, then that is gonna, we're gonna act according to that, even if we don't realize that's what's going on beneath the surface on in the bottom of the iceberg, right? 
So the other part of this, and this is the bit that we're going to work on today, is beliefs. And again, we spend two weeks doing this in Unstoppable. And actually, we do the self-image work and the beliefs all the way through the 12 weeks. And you do it for the rest of your life, guys. Like, this isn't just a quick five minutes and then you're done. This is reprogramming. This is reconditioning decades of programming in the mind, right? So let's look at beliefs. Beliefs are creating your reality. It's not the other way around. Okay, we think neuroscience shows us that our brain will fit our outside world, our outside environment, according to the beliefs that we hold. It is not, oh, that happened. Right. I had this I had this uh, client call and I didn't manage to sign them. I never managed to sign them. No one ever wants to work with me. I, it didn't happen. So, so there you go. That's created my belief and I knew it. Well, it's not like that. It's the other way around. And instead, it is the fact that I have this belief that it hasn't happened for me in the past and it won't happen in the future. I have that belief. And because of that belief, that becomes my reality. Okay. So it's our beliefs that create those circumstances. And then those circumstances prove our beliefs to be true. Okay. So we have to change our beliefs in order to change anything outside of us. Because remember, the thought comes first. Everything starts with the thought and we have to change that belief. So we argue for them we because we think they're real but this is just who i am but i've always been like this i've always been shy i've always been a morning person i've never been good at tech i'm not a techie person all this stuff these are beliefs these are beliefs we can be whatever we program into our mind it's not about we are built a certain way no we're programmed a certain way we're programmed to believe a certain way and if we change those beliefs, we become that version, right? So in business, this can come out like, on a belief, and Abraham Hicks tells us that beliefs are just thoughts we keep thinking. This is why we can change them. We start thinking new thoughts over and over and over again. Then we create new beliefs that take over the old beliefs, okay? So we can choose a belief that doesn't feel true right now, and we can reprogram that into our mind as being our new belief. And we have to if we want that to be our outcome. So think of the outcome you want. What would you have to believe for that outcome to be true? You start with the belief, not the strategy to get to the outcome. It's the belief. And then when you believe it, the strategy will find you. The how will find you. And then it will transpire. Then it will happen. So the typical beliefs in business, I'm not good enough. I never seem to get it right. I can't make it work. It's so hard to make money. I have to work really hard to be successful. I have to do it all myself. I'm not techie. Tell me if any of these are resonating with you right now. Let me know in the chat whether you are on um, la oh, whether you're on live or you're on the replay. Let me know what beliefs are ringing true for you. So I just want to show you how your beliefs impact your world. So let's break it down. If you had a belief, and let me know in the chat, and hopefully it will um, come through quickly. If you had a belief that it's really, really difficult to make money in business. How would these, how would this belief make you think? What kind of thoughts would be generated off that belief? So I'll give you some examples and then add your own. I have to try all the things. Like if it's really hard in business, I have to try everything. I have to do everything. I have to be on all the platforms because it's really, really hard. I have to work 20 hours a day because it's really hard to make money in business. Most people are going to say no to me because it's really hard. I probably won't be able to do it. Let me know if you've come up with any more and I will um, read them out as they come through. So first of all, your beliefs are going to create thoughts that are similar to that belief. It's harder for me than it is for others. Oh, that's a good one, isn't it? That is a good one. And remember, if that's, <laughs> if that's our belief, that's our reality. And reality just keeps showing that over and over and over us over again. So how does that make you think? How does that make you feel? And then how does that make you act from that belief? I have a belief that other people can make money in coaching, but that it's really hard for me because people might want to pay my prices, right? So how is that belief going to impact the things you do in your business, the prices that you charge, your confidence when you're having sales calls or putting your offers out? Are you going to put offers out? Or are you going to resist it because you don't think people will pay, right? You can't be successful and have freedom. These are brilliant. 
And how's that going to play out? I can't be successful and have freedom. Therefore, I have to choose one or the other. So I'm either going to have freedom and enjoy my life and be broke, or I'm going to be successful, have loads of money and be miserable. Like, what a way to live, right? And that is going to transpire into our reality if that's the belief that we have. That is the belief we'll create because we'll find a way to self-sabotage. If that's our belief, as soon as we have money, we're going to have arguments with people. We are going to make sure our health suffers in one way or another, inadvertently, subconsciously, without being even aware we're doing it. See, you can't have everything, right? Have to work all the time if it's really hard to succeed. Yeah, that's, so these are the thoughts, right? I have to work all the time if it's really hard to succeed, okay? And then what does that do to us? It burns us out. It makes us miserable. It makes us resentful. And of course, all the forcing, all the pushing works against law of attraction, which I'll talk about on Thursday. And so we don't end up getting the success we want anyway. So then it's just showing us that we have to work even harder. But actually, it's not about that. We have to think in a different way. We have to feel in a different way. And we have to act in a different way. Creating an earnings ceiling in my mind. Yeah, people would judge me. No one is interested in me. I can't do this. I mean... These beliefs are crippling, right? Can you see how they make you think? So we, I went through the thing, the um, how it's so hard to make money in the business makes you think. It makes you feel doubtful, limited, powerless, like a victim to circumstance, not good enough, incapable, unworthy. And then based on how you think and feel, what would you your actions and your decisions look like? You'd be working all hard, hustle, grind, You'd have split energy and attention across 50 different things, which of course means none of them are going to work because they're not getting the attention and the focus they need to be successful, right? Not showing up in the way that you need to, not able to, overwhelm, confusion, burnout, right? Avoiding doing the uncomfortable things, just being busy, out of alignment, frustrated, forced and disappointed. So what are the results going to be from that belief? Hard to make money. Of course, it's going to be hard to make money because we just created that. (laughs) We made it impossible for ourselves to make money. Because we focus on the problem and we're acting in the problem, we're not seeing the opportunities. If we took that step back and we gave ourselves a few hours a day to relax, to do self-care, to create space for ourselves, to open up our mind, to go walking in nature, to do exercise, you know, to allow ourselves time to listen to some inspirational content, positive mindset content, you know, feed our mind, feed our body, feed our soul. Then suddenly we get an idea to collaborate with this person over there. We jump on a quick live the next day. Before we know it, we've had 100 signups because they've got a list of 20,000 people. I mean, this can happen, right? And what did it take? A few hours of self-care, one live, and then 100 people. That might sound extreme, but if you don't believe that's possible, that is not going to be possible for you, right? But if you believe it's possible and you stay lingering in possibility, then you are opening yourself up for that to be a possibility for you. These things happen all the time, but we don't have access to the ideas and the solutions when we are homed in on the limiting belief that this is how it is, this is how it's always been, I can't see out past my blinkers, you know, I can't see any other way. And we've got millions of ideas on the other side of the blinkers. And we're like, no, no, this is this is my fact. I'm no good. I'm not worthy. I can't do it. Success doesn't come to me. It's really hard to make money. And yet out the corner of your eye, you can see someone making millions of pounds just from doing a few hours a day or whatever it is, right? Yeah, but it's different for them because they have this and they had that and they had this startup and they've got whatever, all the excuses come up. But actually, the reality is that can be you. That absolutely can be you. But you have to start believing it. You have to start believing in a different way. So I've kept you long enough, but just super quick, let's flip that. If you had the belief that you could make money effortlessly in your business, how would that make you think? What would the thoughts be? If I can make money effortlessly in my business, this is easy. I can do this. I don't even have to work that hard. Clients just come to me. Money just comes to me. I'm really good at this. I love this. This is so fun. So from those different thoughts, how would that make you feel? Excited, happy, joyful, blessed, grateful, enough, courage, trust, faith, 
So you're in alignment with your goal. You're in the right vibration to attracting what you want, what you want. Happy, excited, successful, exactly. So then how would you act from this place compared to the other place where you're hustling and you're working and grinding and miserable? You'd focus on alignment. You'd focus on work that lights you up. You'd choose to do the things that you love. You'd outsource or leave the other things because you don't have to do all the things. You look for your areas of, of your zone of genius and you work in the areas that you love, right? You're magnetic. Your energy is magnetic to clients. Your posts are hitting people in the right way. You're willing to get out of your comfort zone. You're brave. You're strong. You feel unstoppable. So you're willing to do whatever it takes and you are willing to take, make those uncomfortable moves, to take that action. And of course, you're open to receiving all the ideas, which you're happily following, even if they make you feel uncomfortable because you feel unstoppable. You feel confident and successful. So you can look fear in the face and choose the vibration, the feelings that you're feeling because you're telling yourself a different story and you're telling yourself a new belief, right? So you go for it. Now, how different are those outcomes going to be in your business? What is the different outcome going to be? Magnetic, magnetic to clients, to income. You'll grow your business. You'll make more money. Law of attraction is going to be responding to your consistent thoughts of abundance, ease, fun, and joy, right? You're going to become an exact match for it. People are going to want to be in your energy. People are going to want to know what you've got. They're going to want to be around you. They're going to want to learn from you. You're going to be open to receive these million dollar ideas. So you will grow your business. You'll become more successful. You will do the things that you want to do that you've been holding yourself back from. So that is, I've given you two scenarios so you can see how your beliefs are really creating everything around you. I love this example. If you don't believe or you don't try, how can we be open to receiving these new opportunities? Exactly. Fresh air, jogging, walking. I love this for new ideas and to refresh my mind and banish the negativity. Exactly. This comes easy. New ideas fly to, flow to me and I welcome them. Overwhelm is non, yeah, non-existent. Money loves me. Yes, exactly. So I did have a slide that I was going to show you. I know we're out of time now. So just a couple more, just, to, just because I think it's so helpful. A couple more examples. So the limiting beliefs, I'm not good enough belief. So you'd think, I can't do this. I need another course or qualification. I have to try really hard. You feel like an imposter. Going, You're going to get found out. You're unworthy of success and money. The outcome, you're not going to show up authentically or with conviction. You're going to be hiding, resisting, avoiding. You're not going to be taking bold action. And you're going to be avoiding being seen and putting alphas out there. So you are not going to make money. You're not going to grow your business. You're not going to get more clients. Limiting belief. I never seem to get it right. Think your thoughts. What's the point? Nothing ever works. There must be something wrong with me. You feel frustrated like a failure, impatient, hopeless. So the outcome is that you're doing too much and you're getting nowhere. You're getting overwhelmed. You procrastinate. You're not taking inspired action towards your goals. So you don't grow your business. You don't make more money. You don't get more clients. Limiting belief. Um, another one. We've already done the hard to make money. I'm not techie because I hear this so often. So this one's for you guys who are resonating with this. Your thoughts. I'm rubbish with tech. I'm not techie. I won't be able to do it. What's the point? It sounds too hard. It's too confusing. So then you feel fear and discomfort towards tech, learning new tools or new software. So you close yourself off from it. The outcome is that you avoid tech, you avoid change, you procrastinate, you feel stuck, you can't move your business forward at all, you're really limited with what you know, because you're avoiding this whole tech stuff when actually, we can outsource the tech. And actually, when we when we tell ourselves a different thought, and we create a new belief, we can become open to overcoming the challenges that the tech is presenting us to, because we're open and not closed. Right, I just wanted to share that quickly before I went. So your homework tonight is go to the workbook and you have got a few questions to ask about the belief. Pick one main belief that is holding you back in your business right now. And I want you to answer those questions and this will help give you a breakthrough. Okay, so make sure once you've done that, you come into the group, you, you create your own post in the group, sharing your aha, sharing your win your breakthrough everything okay and we will all be here to celebrate with you and of course you'll go into the prize draw 
So thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Have a good day. I will see you tomorrow.